I'm actually going to be shooting a typical Volenvine style vlog because I realized this week I'm scheduled to record a sewing episode. However, these past few weeks I have not been able to get any sewing done. So I have no content to share with you as far as sewing is concerned. So I thought, uh, since I also don't have any knitting progress to share with you, I would just record a Volen vlog. It's Wednesday, uh, so I'll just be sharing some little snippets of my day with you, and I thought this week would be the perfect opportunity to shoot this type of tutorial slash, I don't know what you want to call it. I don't, I don't know if it's sort of a tutorial, so to speak, but more just taking you through my creative process of, are you ready for it, creating a new colorway. One of the most highly requested episodes I get to date is number one, how to dye yarn, number two, creating a new colorway. So that is what we're going to be doing today. I don't know if this colorway is going to become a regular, but it will indeed be a strange brew in this week's upcoming shop update. So I hope you guys are excited for that. Uh, I am also going to be challenging myself to dye a colorway that I don't normally gravitate towards, uh, which is blue. I, I mean, there are certain shades of blue that I like, uh, but just navy blue and cobalt blue, just blue in general, I, I am not that person. I do not wear blue, especially navy blue because I feel like it's an imposter black. It's black, but it's not. It's just trying really hard to be black and it's navy. Navy is a liar. Anyway, <laughs> I don't mean to offend anyone, I just can't do blue. But today I'm going to endeavor to create a blue shade that I like, that you will hopefully like, and we'll, we'll have some fun with this. So I hope you guys are down for that. Uh, gather around, grab a cup of something. Uh, it's, it's gonna be an interesting ride. Uh, but yeah, in the meantime, I'm currently skeining and labeling some yarns that I've dyed earlier this week, and I seem to have forted myself into a little corner over here. Uh, but that's what usually happens. Uh, I had a whole new shipment of undyed yarn come in and maybe a Target purchase, I don't know, but I've got a lot of boxes to break down and stuff to go through inventory-wise. It's good times over here at Volenbein headquarters. But another thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is this corner right here, and I teased it over on my Patreon page. Uh, if you can see here, yes my friends, those are paint swatches, and please ignore the packaging stuff that's over here and this headless unicorn or bodiless unicorn I should say it has a head not a body but right here is my reskeining station and then this corner right here is going to be something very very special in the future I'm going to turn this little section right here into a additional YouTube recording corner when I first took over this space my intention was to have a mauve wall however the paint color that I chose while it is technically mauve it's it's more pink than mauve or more pink than I would like it to be but uh, I, I really haven't had the time or energy to <laughs> repaint it uh, until up until now where I'm like you know what this corner right here is not being utilized I don't I honestly have no idea what the heck this situation is here it's a shelf I mean it's it's doing its job it's shelving things but really I have this light down here that I use for product photography and I've been watching a whole bunch of YouTube videos on lighting and recording vlogs and I've just been completely inspired uh, to revamp this little corner and decorate it repaint it and and create another little recording nook for myself and yeah so I'm I'm really excited about that so I wanted to give you guys a little preview and and over the weekend, Dennis and I are going to take a quick trip to Ikea, uh, order it online, pick it up so, you know, social distancing and all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna pick up a shelf and then shop around my house for things to accessorize and decorate and it should be a lot of fun. And of course, I'm going to take you guys along with me when I do that. All right, let me finish skeining up that yarn and labeling stuff and then we will get on to dyeing a new colorway. Hey guys, so I'm in the dye studio, I'm about to get started dyeing, and I apologize if the audio quality isn't great, it's quite loud in here, so I may either do a voiceover or add subtitles or something, but uh, it is gonna get loud, and 
Ideally, I would be wearing a mask. I'm gonna try and wear a mask as much as possible, but in order for me to communicate to you what I'm doing uh, today, I'm going to make an exception, but if you are doing this at home, always wear a mask, a respirator. You always wanna wear a mask to protect your lungs from vapors or acid dye powder. Again, the goal here is to dye a strange brew that is blue. I always like to apply a base coat of color first, so I'm going to start with this color, Baby Blue Eyes by Dharma Acid Dyes, and I'm going to mix in a little bit of this frozen color. So this is Baby Blue Eyes is, as the name suggests, a very light, almost vivid type of blue, and then frozen has a little bit of teal mixed in with it. So I'm gonna kind of play around with mixing these two together and seeing what I get. And of course I am adding a half tablespoon of citric acid to my dye bath. As you can see, I only filled the pot with water about a quarter of the way, maybe a little bit less. And I don't want to bring my water to a full boil. I only want to get it hot enough where I can see water vapors rising off the surface and that's hot enough. Uh, but yes, I added one tablespoon of citric acid and then I can get started dyeing. Usually when I'm creating a new colorway, I like to start out with a test pot. So this pot right here is going to be my test pot where I can see what's working, what's not working, and all the other pots get the green light, so to speak. So yeah, let's, let's start playing. Uh, unlike some other dyers, I don't make dye stock. I just scoop the powder straight from the container itself and just use a measuring spoon to measure out how much or how little I need. Uh, depending on the dye, a little can go a long way and with blues, blues go a long way. So I'm just gonna start out with maybe half of one eighth of a teaspoon. Uh, and again, this is, I'm gonna start out with baby blue eyes. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna maybe do half of one eighth of a teaspoon and see where that gets me. All right, so there's that. gonna be relatively light uh, and then let me add maybe just a tiny smidgen I have such technical terms here of uh, frozen so I'm just gonna take that little tiny bit right there I don't know how well you're gonna melt it and just dump it in so that's probably gonna add like a nice little green greenish hue to it I don't know we'll see And this is my footsie base, so this is Blue Face Luster. And I'm not gonna submerge the entire thing. I'm, I kind of like giving base coats an uneven kind of element to it, so I'm just gonna let that sit there. I'm gonna let the dye exhaust into the yarn for a little bit and then come back, remove it, and add another layer. This is such an awkward angle, so we're just, we're just gonna roll with it. But uh, for my next color that I'm going to layer over the blue is going to be Pecan Brown, uh, which is kind of like a dark, um, cool brown, I want to say. There's no red tones in it. Usually for the second layer, I look on the color wheel and go for the opposite color, just to kind of give it a little extra dimension, if that makes any sense. So the idea is for the blue to kind of peek through the brown over layer that I'm going to put on. Again, I'm not using technical terms at all, but uh, this is what we're going to try for and see what see what happens. So I'm just going to pop this out. There we go. And you can see it's not completely even, which is fine. I like that. That's gonna give the colorway a lot of dimension. So I'm gonna remove that. Then I'm gonna take pecan brown. Oops. And again, a little goes a long way. So I am just going to give half an eighth teaspoon, eyeball it pretty much. I eyeball pretty much all of my colorways, all the measurements and dump that in and see what that looks like. Now I'm just gonna plop that in there. And then, ah, that looks, that actually looks really nice. I don't know how long you're gonna be able to see that, but I like how these little blues are peeking through. That's what I love about using neutrals over bright colors. It definitely takes down the, uh, the, the boldness of a bright blue. So I'm really, really liking this. And it's adding just like a little bit of warmth to this bright saturated blue. All right, so now while that layer of dye is setting, I'm going to choose some speckles. I feel like I want this to be kind of like a woodland inspired colorway. That's what I'm getting from this like blue and brown. So maybe kind of like a berry-ish pop of speckles if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna go take a look at my acid dye collection over there and forge for some berrylicious shades. 
All right, here's what I found. I found Fawn, which is oh so apropos. It's This is a really, really nice color. I love speckling with this one all the time. Uh, and then Chocolate Brown, which is a really nice kind of rich, almost burgundy brown. Um, and I like the way that this dye separates when you speckle it. The term is actually called breaking the dye. So um, if you don't mix the dye around and you just splatter it or speckle it around, the dye actually breaks, the molecules just break apart. All the dyes baked into this specific dye just break apart on the yarn and you get to see all the little individual colors that make up that one whole color. So it's really cool, it's science, it's wonderful. And I'm going to be using my handy dandy enamel sifter, which is kind of like a micro sifter. Um, and if you are into dyeing yarn, I will link down below where you can get one of these. I used to be able to get them on Amazon, not so much anymore, but I did find another source where you can get them in all different sizes, but um, this is really handy for very fine speckling, so I highly recommend it. Five minutes later. I usually let the dye set for about five minutes and then I rotate it again and then add another layer of speckling. So you can take your tongs or your finger and just kind of poke and see where the speckle is, and it looks like that is pretty set. Some dyes take longer than others, but this one look, look, looks like it's good to go. So I'm gonna just rotate this really quickly. All right, so I ended up adding a layer of blue speckles as well. Oh my God, my hair. Ugh. So I did end up adding a layer of blue speckles and indeed I am regretting it. It is too bright. It is too bright. Thankfully that is just the test pot. So in the future, all these pots here, I'm not going to add the blue. I just don't like it. I can't do blue. I don't like it. I'm not a blue person. So I'm going to leave the blue out for the next one, but I really did like the fawn. So I'm just going to find another complimentary dye to speckle upon that. Maybe I'll do the plum. A plum that breaks into red and blue. I know what I'm gonna do. By the way, I just added a kick light over here, so the lighting is way better. Yay! I should have recorded with this the whole time, but you know, anyway. I'm going to use this dye called Plum Dandy. This one, the breakability is kind of incredible, so this should add a nice little pop of something. And again, with pinks and purples, you definitely wanna go a little more light-handed. This one's a bleeder. <laughs> I forgot about this color. Maybe alpine blue might be a better, better choice in blues. Let's see what alpine blue does. That might just have to say, yeah, no, 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 not liking it. Honestly, it's having the same effect, if not brighter, than baby blue eyes, just more on the cobalt side. Not digging that at all. I am all done and I have a random bobby pin in my hair. I don't know what that's about. But anyway, uh, I'm all done dying for the day and my battery is about to run out. So I will pick the rest of this up manana. But I do want to show you what came out of the pot. I am pleasantly surprised. I thought I was just going to feel kind of meh about this, but I am really liking the results. And yeah, tomorrow I'll show you in proper lighting, like all the little undertones that are happening over here, but it's this very nice muted warm blue with this plum kind of overtone to it or plum speckles and, you know, subtle shades of plum happening in there. So lots of uh, shades of blue and plum and delightful little speckles happening. So anyway, can't wait to see what this looks like fully dry. And uh, yeah, so again, I'll show you the main thing. Again, I'll show you what it all looks like dried and twisted tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm gonna fire this puppy up because it is humid AF. This is my trusty dehumidifier. It sucks all the moisture out of the air because if I didn't have it, this would take forever to dry. This has saved my life on so many occasions when I had to ship yarn out the next day. Uh, so there you have it. I'm gonna go fire that up and head on upstairs and enjoy the rest of my night. The next day. You guys, I am really liking the way these turned out. Oh my gosh, I think I think these may have to become a regular, uh, except the lighting is super crap right now, so hang on a sec. 
This is where I take all of my product photography. So this is the perfect setup to show you guys what this finally looks like. So I will be totally honest. I am really, really pleased with the way these turned out. I think these may have to become a regular. I dyed this colorway on two bases. This one is my Nouveau base, which is 100% Superwash Merino uh, single ply. And then this one is my footsie base, my soft yarn, which is a blend of blue face luster and nylon. So I love this for knitting socks. And you can see how the different bases take the dye differently. So they all have their own very own personalities. Just to show you guys the difference, these two schemes right here are from the test pot where I was experimenting with dyes, seeing what worked and what didn't. And you can see there are some blue speckles in here and they're a little bit lighter, not too much, but a little bit lighter than the main skeins, the, the finished formula. And you can see how I was able to take what I learned from these skeins and fine tune the formula uh, for the finished colorway. Did I meet the goal of dyeing a specifically blue colorway? Not so much, but I do like how there's some blues popping through and some berries happening there. I think I'm gonna end up calling this colorway Forbidden Fruit. If you remember yesterday, I was thinking up a theme for this colorway and I kind of wanted to do like a fruits of the forest or foraging type theme. So Forbidden Fruit seems very, very apropos. All right, let me go take some photos of those and get them into the newsletter because I am running behind on schedule. I've got to get the newsletter out. <sighs> so many things to do. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that, um, that little tutorial, if you want to call it that. I had a lot of fun filming it and I hope you guys learned something. Uh, if you have any questions, any dye questions, let me know down in the comments below uh, and I will endeavor to answer them for you or maybe, who knows, uh, create another video based on what questions I get. If you are new here and you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe down below. I put out two videos for your viewing pleasure every week and if you'd like to support this channel, hop on over to my Patreon page and I will see you on the next video. Bye!